Hello everybody and thank you for watching this video. In this video I'm going to be showing you the, uh, the red tabs in our um, entrepreneurship worksheet that is used to complete assignment number four or your recipe costings. Okay, uh, so now I'm just going to share it. Bear with me for a second. There we go. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so here we go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, six main parts of this um, this worksheet. The first one is contains the name of your ingredients. The second one contains the purchasing, uh, or sorry, the costs, the as purchase costs for your ingredients. The next is the yield that we're going to have to identify for each of our products, and then we're going to have to calculate the edible portion based on the yield and the amount of the product. Okay. Uh, then we calculate the recipe unit cost. And then based on the, the amount of each product used in the recipe, oops, based on the amount of the product used in the recipe, we're going to calculate the extended cost. And then we're going to finish up by calculating the cost proportion, which I'll show you in just a second. Okay. So uh, we're going to start off with our goat cheese here, okay? Our goat cheese came in a, uh, a pack of 1 kg that cost us uh, $21.82, and we gave it 100% yield, okay? These yields are going to be determined by you. Um, as long as they're relatively logical, I'm okay. Uh, you can also look them up online using uh, standardized yield forms, but again, it's up to you. Um, any product with 100% yield is going to have the exact same edible portion because 100% of it is usable. Any product that has less than 100%, uh, well, that means that we can't use 100% of the product. So how we calculate our edible portion yield is by taking the amount uh, in the pack and then multiplying it by the yield. Okay, so let's get 1. 1 multiplied by 100 is 1 or more specifically in this case, it is 1 kg. Uh, the majority, and it, it depends on where you've got your costing information, but if you've got your costing information from the database that I had posted, the majority of the weight or count for each product is normally going to be 1. So 1 kg, 1 piece, 1 liter, uh, 1 kg, uh, and so on. If you've got it somewhere else, uh, you and the pack includes more than 1, unit of measure, then you're going to have to include them here, okay? So as we do that, we're just multiplying across. So we have 24 beets that have a yield of 100%. We get 24 pieces, okay? Uh, the only times, I'm just going to do this quickly here so I can show you. Uh, there we go. Uh, the only times where we're going to have less than we actually purchased oops, is when there's a yield less than 100%. For example, here are chives. We started off with 8 kilograms of them. Because they have uh, an 85% yield, when we take into consideration yield, we really only have 6.8 kgs. Okay? And again, we're calculating that just by multiplying the weight or the count by the yield percentage. Okay? As we move across here, we want to calculate uh, essentially the unit cost of each ingredient used in uh, the recipe in the unit that it is used in the recipe. Okay, so for example, here we bought what is this? This is our goat cheese. So the first line is our goat cheese. We bought goat cheese uh, in one kilogram. Um, however, we're using it in grams in our menu or in our recipe, so we have to calculate the cost per gram. We take the cost uh, per kg and then divide it by a thousand because there are a thousand grams in one kg. Next, um, we have the cost of whatever these were. Uh, it cost us 45. Um, it was called $45, and 24 came in. So we do the math. Uh, we get $1.88 per piece. Okay, same thing here. 
milliliters, uh, we take the, the cost of the, uh, of the product and then divide it by 1,000 because there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Okay. Now, here's where it gets a bit tricky. Okay. It's when products have a yield less than uh, 100%. Okay. To illustrate, we started off with 8 kgs. When we take into consideration the yield, we only have 6.8 kgs. Okay. So the cost per kilogram is going to go up. We need to show that and take that into consideration when we're calculating the cost for one gram. And I'll show you how to do that. So what we do here is take our <coughs> the original cost. In this case, it was $8.75. We're then going to divide it by the edible portion. And remember, it has a yield of 85%, so less than 100. We're then going to, after we've done that math, we're then going to divide that by 1,000. Okay. Uh, here, for the next one, we had 100% yield, so the math is super quick. Okay. Or actually, no, because it came in a pack of two. So we have to take this, take the original cost, divide it by two kgs to get the cost per kg. There we go. And then divide it by 1,000 to get the cost per gram. Uh, here, another complex one because it has a yield less than 95%. Okay, so uh, we take the cost. Sorry, I'm going to put the bracket around it. We take the cost, we then divide it by the amount of kgs that it actually yielded, okay, and then we divide it by 1,000. Okay, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger here. There we go. Okay. Uh, here we have a product that had more than one unit measure. So we take the, we take, keep forgetting the brackets. We take the cost, divide it by the amount of the product in the pack, like that, and then divide it by a thousand because there are a thousand milliliters in one liter. So there we are. And then here's another yield uh, that has less than 100%. So we take the cost, take the cost, divide it by the amount of the product in the pack, close the bracket, and then divide by a thousand, because there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. So now that we've done that, these are the uh, unit costs or unit costs that we're going to be using to cost out the amount of product in the recipe. Okay, so uh, the next step is to calculate our extended cost. Um, important to note here, the recipe units used is the amount of each product used in the recipe. For example, here, our goat cheese, we use 160 grams of goat cheese in this recipe. So calculating the extended cost is quite simple. We take the amount of the product in the recipe and then multiply it by the unit cost. There we go. Um, a really easy way to do the rest of this, well, I'll give you another example before I show you that. So we're taking the amount of the product in the recipe and multiplying it by the cost. There we are. And two, if you wanted to calculate the formula and drag it, uh, if you wanted to copy the formula to all the cells below, you just grab the little blue or green box on the right hand side. Click it and drag it all the way down. There you have it. We have all of our extended costs. So if I go down here, I want to add up all of those extended costs to get the subtotal. Uh, oops, there we go. So in this case, this particular recipe, whatever it is, uh, it's really hard to tell based on these ingredients. Um, boop, based on these ingredients, but uh, it, whatever this recipe is, it cost us six dollars and thirty-one cents. Now we want to add ten percent wastage, so we take our subtotal and multiply it by zero point one or ten percent, and we get sixty-three cents, which means this is going to cost us, or we're going to add sixty-three cents to this recipe uh, to 
account for any wastage in production. We then add these two up, there we are, to get the total cost for this recipe. Now here's where uh, you can put in the amount of portions that each one of your recipes will yield. Okay, so this uh, recipe may yield one or two, uh, but just for example purposes, I'm going to show you. Uh, let's assume that this recipe yields two portions. Okay, to calculate the cost per portion, we take the total cost and divide it by the amount of portions in the recipe. In this case, it's two, which means that the cost per portion in this case is three dollars and seventy-four cents. Okay. Um, if that seemed a little bit fast or a little bit confusing, please feel free to re-watch re this. We're also going to be doing uh, a very similar exercise in class. Okay, thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in class.